Hey everybody, it's Jay Henry. Uh, in this video, I'm going to use the Terraform scripts that we created in the last video to provision our AWS uh, infrastructure, and I'm going to hook those uh, scripts up to our CI/CD pipeline that we've created in Circle CI. So. Just as a review, we have a very simple um, pipeline set up in, in Circle CI that first does a build step, and then if that is successful, it will. Um, sorry, if that is successful, that it'll go on and do a, a deploy step. And what we're going to be modifying today is the deploy step. Right now, it just echoes out, you know, hey, I'm, I'm deploying, but we're going to actually. Um, use Terraform in this step to provision and keep our infrastructure up to date. Um, so I think let's open up our code here and where we left off is we had created all of the definitions for our AWS resources um, and just we had manually used Terraform to apply them to our environment. So what we're going to do today is we're going to actually create some scripts that will do that for us in CircleCI. Um, and I think we need three scripts here. One will be install Terraform. Um, you know, when, when we push this code up to CircleCI, Terraform will not be pre-installed on the container CircleCI uses to uh, process the build, so we'll need to install it. Um, we will need a specific script, which is apply stage. And this will actually make sure that we're, um, you know, navigating into this directory where this stage uh, configuration file is and, and executing uh, that. And then I, I think we'll want a more generic apply uh, script, which will, this is the file that will actually call Terraform and um, apply the changes, um, but we should be able to use this for any environment, not just stage. And I think when we add a dev environment and a prod environment, um, you'll see that like the apply underscore environment, in this case stage file, it really just parameterizes the um, the build and parameterizes the apply file. But first, let's set this up to install Terraform, because um, we're going to need that. So there are a couple of dependencies um, that we're going to need on the build server. Um, and this is an easy way to make sure that we get them. So just auto install those. A dash Y means we're going to answer yes when you ask us if it's okay. And then we're going to use wget to um, get the Terraform code releases uh, dot HashiCore. HashiCore is the company that uh, created and maintains Terraform. Terraform um, I think the version that we've been using is 12.5, so I'll stick with that. And I think the format here is, is underscore 12.5 Linux AMD 64.zip. I think that'll work. Um, and then we'll unzip it. And uh, the name of the file is going to be this. And so we can cheat a little bit here, uh, do that. And then we're going to move this into the user's local bin folder so that it is on the path. Uh, so we will move. And this is the output of the unzip. Um, and we will say the Terraform is the binary user local bin. And I think that that should do it. Um, and then if we go into our, um, well, let's do all the config stuff at the same time. Let's create the scripts first, and then we'll we'll take a look at the config file. Um, so we're going to set e. We're going to set an invariant env equals stage, and this is going to be a uh, a variable that we are going to pass into the apply script, and then scripts apply.ash and so really all we're doing here is parameterizing this uh, script 
and then in apply uh, we will echo out and make sure that we did in fact receive the variable um, we're going to change into that directory and that's so that's why you know we were talking last time about how we have to ha set up a subdirectory for each environment because we're going to need to get in there and execute in that context uh, we'll do that we'll do a terraform init just to make sure it's initialized always a good idea to do a terraform plan um, so that you get you know information in your build uh, in case there's any errors with your config or anything um, Terraform apply, and then we will use the auto approve flag. And so, if you watched the last video, um, you saw that when we did the Terraform apply, it went through and it made sure that you know everything was going to compile. And then it, it specifically asked, "Are you sure you want to apply these changes?" And obviously, that won't work in a uh, unattended you know build environment where there's no human to sit there and type yes. So this will just you know type yes for you in essence um, <clears throat> and that's it for that now what we're going to need to do is obviously we're going to need to make sure that these scripts all have um, execute permissions so we'll go in and go in here oh, no, it's not vision it's actually infrastructure infrastructure uh, and we're going to go scripts yep and then um, we're going to apply the same permission to each of these plus x apply.sh apply stage.sh and install terraform.sh and that should be all that we need to do for the script. So I think what we probably want to do next is let's go in and, and can modify the CircleCI config file and um, talk about how this is a little bit different than what we did last time. So this is the stage that we're going to be modifying. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to set up set it up so that regardless of environment we can run the same set of commands here um, and then we're going to create a new job which is deploy stage um, and uh, we're going to do something special here which is we are going to tell it to use basically a basically use a job template um, I don't know what the technical term for these are but we're gonna turn this into a job template and then we're gonna parameterize it here and call it um, passing in some variables and we're gonna pass it a tag of stage and I'll show you why this is important in a second um, but there's a couple things that we have to do here one is for our workflow we have to change this from deploy to deploy stage so that it calls this job and then here um, and deploy env so this is this is now setting this up as a um, job template which is what i call it again i don't know if that's the technical term or anything um, the docker image is going to stay the same um, steps are going to be slightly different so this time we're actually going to be doing something that uses our code because um, we are you know going to use the scripts that are included in our code to execute so we need to check out the code and get it onto um, the local environment and then we also need to set up a working directory um, so that we can use relative paths when referencing our scripts um, and so uh, this will clone the code down and basically it'll create a directory with our code here we'll set that as our working directory and then any paths that we use from here on out will be relative to that path um, set up remote docker and this is a special command um, that circle CI provides and basically what it does is it sets up an isolated docker environment that you can run commands inside of that is not shared by anybody else uh, it's for security and um, y you just always use that unless you're doing you know like Mac OS builds or something like that um, 
so we'll keep this step and then we're going to run some bash scripts and this is where the scripts that we wrote are going to come in really handy um, install terraform which will install it on the local server and then um, I'm going to run and again a bash and we're going to do scripts apply and then this is where the parameters come in apply tag and so that tag since we set it as stage here it's going to reach out in here and, and execute this script and when we have you know one of these for and we could set it up now I think it's fine um, won't be used but we could do something like this which is prod and we could say prod you know there and um, it, it would execute this same job template but it would uh, you know execute apply prod um, and, and we can actually go ahead and do that control C uh, V let's rename this and we can make this prod um, and we could do that, and, and it's fine. We we don't have anything set up to trigger it right now, but just to kind of give you an idea of how those things are um, used and, and why we set them up this way. Uh, and I really think that that is all that there is to it. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to validate this schema. I'm going to validate these scripts um, and you know fix any bugs that you know might have crept in there. Um, if there's anything major, I'll call it out. But, you know, this code is always checked into the repo that I'll leave in the description. So if there is anything that's changed, you'll see it in the code. Um, so give me just a minute and I will be, I actually might actually push this up and have it execute against CircleCI just to make sure everything's working. Um, and then we'll walk through it. So give me just a second. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, so it looks like the build is working. Um, you know, we've got the same setup environment, preparing environment. Um, uh, we've added checkout code um, and set up remote Docker. Same de uh, echo out deploy. Um, here is where we installed Terraform. And then here it's actually applying uh, the settings to our environment. Um, it's giving us a plan. I wonder if I can just skip down to the bottom of this. Um, and then it's going to actually provision this stuff. And this, you know, if you remember from the last video, this is going to take a couple of minutes. But hopefully at the end of this, um, we should have a full environment in AWS. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this until this is done. Um, oh, and there was, real quick while I'm here, there was one change I had to make. The script, this was set. Um, and so it wasn't making it to this file, so I had to change it to export. Um, and I had to lowercase the s because it's uh, case sensitive uh, here. But uh, other than that, everything was working. So I'm going to pause this until our infrastructure has been created, and then I'll show you the output of the build. Um, and then we'll go in and take a look at uh, AWS to make sure that everything was uh, created. And then what I'm going to do is I'll probably make a slight change to uh, one of the files and then re-push uh, the code just to see that it doesn't take this long to create everything every time because stuff that already exists, it's not going to bother to create. And so subsequent builds will be much faster. So um, let's give this some time to complete and I'll be right back. Stand by. Okay, and we're done. So let's take a look at the overall workflow. Um, let's see here, build stage took 22 seconds, deploy stage took three and a half minutes. Um, the part that we really care about is in here where it created, um, well, it should have created all of our infrastructure in AWS. We're gonna validate that in a second, um, but it says you added 15 resources, changed none, destroyed none. Um, and we're going to take a look at that in a second. But let's go into AWS and just validate that the stuff that we care about was created. Um, so let's go to our container repo. And uh, we do have the repo here. I don't think it has any images in it because we haven't pushed any yet. Um, if we look at clusters, we should have a cluster. Good. 
with a single service. Um, the service currently doesn't have any tasks because we don't have any images up there, but we're gonna we're gonna fix that probably in the next video. Um, I know I said I was gonna do that part in this video, but the last video ran way too long and I'm trying to keep this stuff uh, digestible. So I think we're just gonna get this stuff done this time and then create the container and push it up here f uh, to provision the service next time. Um, what else do we care about here? Let's take a look at EC2. Um, and a, a lot of this stuff was in the last uh, video, but we should have a load balancer here. We do. That's awesome. Uh, should have listeners. Listeners should have rules. You know, if it goes to the default action. Um, and so this is this is what we wanted. If it goes to any path in here, it's going to forward it to this listener. Right now, it's it's going to be the same no matter what. But if we had multiple services in here, we could use paths to uh, send our traffic to different services. And and I think we'll get to that. I'm going to do a series on setting up platform microservices, and and we'll have a lot more rules in here at that point. Um, but I think this looks pretty good to me. Now, what I want to do. Uh, is just demonstrate that um, you know we can let's let's do something like put a comment in here um, or just a new line whatever um, echo deployed successfully or something like that is that how you spell successfully successfully I'm gonna put another s in there I don't know what it is I'll, maybe I'll Google it and it'll tell me. Yeah, maybe that's a wise move. Yeah, two S's, yay. Um, and so with that change, we're going to save this. Um, we will commit the change. New get status. Should just be that file. Git commit am. Adding uh, echo statement to demonstrate uh C I C D with no structural changes. And then we'll push that up. Git push origin master. And you probably noticed I use the command line for Git. Uh, I have uh, heard that there are lots of great GUI tools out there for it. I got burned early in my career with them, so I have lost my taste for them. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with them. All right, so we push up that change in just a second. Circle CI should recognize that we've made that change. Should kick off a new workflow. Um, it's well, it's already already completed the build stage, which is quick. And then I think that the uh, deploy stage should be much quicker this time um, because it's not going to have to spin up all of the infrastructure from scratch. And we'll take a look at the output from uh, the uh, deploy uh, section and see that it's just checking to see that everything's still there. Um, but we still got to obviously spin up our environment. There we go. That's good. That's good. Install Terraform. And then this is the part that it should be much quicker. Um, I think the last one was like three and a half minutes or something. This should just check that everything exists. Um, should say that there are no changes, and that should be about all that it has to do. Yep. And so obviously that was a lot quicker. It was 19 seconds as opposed to three and a half minutes. So, you know, once you get your infrastructure up and deployed um, and you're happy with it, your incremental changes will build uh, much more quickly. Um, I think that's all we're going to do this time. Next time I am going to create the Docker image for the computer vision service and we will add the Terraform code to the um, vision repository to get it deployed on check-in. Um, so if any of this was useful to you, uh, please like and subscribe below. Um, if I did anything wrong or I misstated anything or I like made any glaring errors, please let me know in the comments. Um, I love to learn stuff. Um, and yeah, so otherwise, thank you for watching and see you next time.